everybody, and welcome to DC Time. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Glad you joined us again, and have we got a doozy for you all today. <laughs> uh, Chris and I got together, and of course, we was like, hey, what are we going to talk about? Chris mentioned to me yesterday, he was looking at in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, or thereabouts, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and said, "Hey, let's talk about that." So that's what we're doing. We just turned the camera on, and you're gonna join. Oh, excuse me, there. You're gonna join right in our conversation, and see where this takes us. Um, so Ephesians four, verse one says, "I am entreating you, then, I, the prisoner in the Lord, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all humility and meekness, with patience." bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit with the tie of peace, one body and one Spirit, according as you were called also with one expectation of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Got read through five there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard to stop. (laughs) Right. Good stuff there. It's really good stuff. Yeah. So we're going to go back through that a little bit and just uh, banter back and forth here, perhaps. Yeah. Look at that. It says to walk worthily of the calling. Um, you kind of, and you got to step back and start asking questions. Mm-hmm. When you just read these things, we think we know what it means, but mm-hmm. it's so nice to go back. And it's like, well, first off, what is the calling? Um, and then walk worthily. You know, what does that mean? Right. How do we do that? When we're not worthy. Right. We, we talked <laughs> about that um, off camera. We talked about that. The minute you see something, walk worthily of the calling, it begins to sound like a commandment. Mm-hmm. Or it, it sounds like it's something somehow attached to our salvation. And, and that only the only way that I think that always presents itself is just simply because we don't have a frame of reference for what grace really is, what pure grace is. Uh, We live in a pay-as-you-go society, um, and this specific administration that we are in um, is this unmerited favor being lavished on us. We don't deserve it, but it's being lavished on us. And so when you see this walk worthily of the calling, I know that I myself immediately was like, I'm not worthy of this. I don't walk worthily of this calling. I mean, all the time I'm failing. Right. We can't make ourselves. You can't do anything to make yourself worthy. No. It's not. So it's not about, yeah, it's not about that. Well, no. And this morning, well, actually, Leo, I think it was Leo that just read Ephesians 3. I, I watched the other night. And I believe he read all of three. He's getting ready to read four. Um, And as he was reading it, the verse that stuck out was, if you just go up a little bit and look at 320, now to him who is able to do super excessively above all that we are requesting in us, to him be glory in the Ecclesia and in Christ Jesus for all the, wait a minute, I, I jumped, excuse me. Uh, Let me start that again. Verse 20. Now to him who is able to do super excessively above above all that we are requesting or apprehending according to the power that is operating in us, to him be the glory in the Ecclesia and in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So again, we find out that it's it's not us. It's that power that is within us, the power that was operative in the Christ, that roused Christ. It's that same thing. So right up here, before you even get into these four verses, we're finding that the things that we are requesting or apprehending according to the power that is operating in us. So now, if you reference that with the word worthily, then to me, then all of a sudden, well, again, it's that sigh of relief. Now, again, this power in me, just like the inarticulate groanings, these these things that I'm going to do 
uh, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another in all love. There's going to be uh, an aid in doing that by this power that's operating in us. That is, um, that helps me. It, it takes away the fear of suddenly I have to act worthily of these things. And that's what we've been saying for the last couple of weeks. We keep ta- we right. keep bringing up this power that we have at our disposal and that is within us um, and is doing things on behalf of us, you know, not knowing what to pray for, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so that here, here right, right away, we jump right into it and we see it here in, in Ephesians 4. Uh, I, I love it. Earlier then, to go along with that, Paul, Paul prays in this in the first chapter. He mm-hmm. prays to the Father of glory that the Father may be giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the realization of him, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened, okay, for you to perceive what is the expectation of his calling. So Paul's praying there for revelation and a realization of him. I believe those things come on as realization, revelation about how great God is, what he's got planned for us, all these big things that Paul's talking about that we can barely grasp, that we mm-hmm. can't even make sense of, really. Some of it's so grand. The things he saw and the things he's talking about. You start getting you know, the eyes of your heart being enlightened, like he said, a oh. little bit. Well, then these things, well, yeah, of course they're not, they're not commandments or they're not looked upon when he's saying walk worthily or whatever. I mean... Who wouldn't want to do that? Or who wouldn't want to be instructed to Mm -hmm. do these things? Mm -hmm. Right. When that realization takes hold, then a lot of these things naturally take over. You have brought up perfectly this this idea of, well, why 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 are all these books showing up at my house? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's this this Mm -hmm. innate thirst that has come forth. Of its own, it has not been, it's really been a response. It's not a, um, what's the word, contrived thing. We're not, oh, no, no. Like I remember trying to do with, with all good intentions. We, we, the trying to fix our, we were trying to fix ourselves. Yeah, we were trying to fix the flesh. And we did all these things, and, and men, good men around us, were trying to encourage us to do these things and stuff. And now this stuff is happening as a response to each realization that God is giving us. It's amazing how much more real it is. I say all the time how much more it resonates. Right. And the focus is, um, it just got shifted. Like I said, the truth never changed. We we just couldn't see it. You know, our perspective now, the way we see it, um, it's changed our minds or whatever. So our focus is... um, Certainly different. We're yeah, we're wanting books. We're wanting to eat all this stuff. We want to learn mm-hmm. more truth because we believe that God is this wonderful God of love. We actually believe that now. It yeah. starts with some basic things. Right. He's really good. He knows what he's doing. He's got a plan. But yeah, it looks like crazyville out there in the world. Right. And the message we used to believe was it's going to end horrific for all eternity. Well, we no longer believe that. God's a good God. And so that that's just the first change, and now all this stuff to to learn about, yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, and Paul is, and there again, back on what we read, Ephesians four, the first word he said that he's entreating, right? He's yes, entreating, yeah, and plea, pleading, right. And so so those are wonderful things, right? Uh, to look at the way he's he's doing it. We shouldn't be scared of any of these things. No. We shouldn't be scared of any instruction. No, I love that this. when you say that. That is uh, so true. To do these things, what would be wrong with that? Listen to what he says here in another place in Colossians. Paul says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Okay? What what does he want us to put on? What what would you think? What would we think would be a strong position to put on mm-hmm. for God? What what should we do for that? You know, mm-hmm. well, look what Paul said in Ephesians. Look what he says here. Pitiful compassions. That's the word used. Is that something we would naturally go to? No. No. Kindness. You know, our Apostle Paul saying this. 
And Paul, based on knowing what he knows, knowing what others have accepted from him, encourages people then to act accordingly, act mm-hmm. worthily. Exactly. What would be wrong yeah. with that? Kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with, with one another. You mentioned bearing with one another. Yeah, the bearing with one another stuck out, stuck out to me in this verse. Dealing graciously among yourselves. Okay, things like that. So right away, yeah. Yeah, do I do all those things? You know, you instantly go back mm-hmm. into, oh, okay, I'm not doing right. Any of it. Or you start right. We find ways to then to, oh, convict well. ourselves that we're not doing mm-hmm. these things. Uh, it, it's it's not about the list. It's not about checking things off. Mm-mm. Back to Ephesians four again, just to say a comment here: endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Um. Or again, we don't make that happen. Mm-mm. You don't make unity. Um, you don't define it. You don't chop it up and say because of this you have you know. It's I mean he's saying endeavoring to keep it. Mm-hmm. It's something we have. There there is a spirit there. Yeah. There is oneness. <laughs> there is unity. Um, it can be tapped into. It can be realized. Um, so he he there again he's encouraging endeavoring to keep it. It's not something you make. Right. It's not yeah, what we, we what do. we just read, keep the unity of the Spirit with the tie of peace. Mm-hmm. I've been reading also in 1 Corinthians, and when you start to hear uh, Paul talking about people saying, well, this person is of Apollos, and this person is of Paul, and this person is of Peter, and it it's not unlike what we do today. I mean, we, we mm. constantly align ourselves... Um, it's that distraction again. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. that distraction about who we're listening to or who we're taking this from. And we said a couple of shows ago that, hell, we see truth in music. Mm-hmm. We see God's truth in nature. Uh, we, we can find it just about anywhere. Right. Um, and who's going to fault me for that? Right. For finding, the, you know, for those things. All right. Well, thanks for joining us in our little conversation here. Hope uh, we got some tidbits of truth out of, yeah. in there. I mean, the truth of the scripture is amazing from Paul. Like I said, I don't think, I always feel like I'm just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. I mean, I read Paul and we read a lot of these things and I'm like, holy cow, what's he even talking about sometimes? Right. You know, now, I even, right. what is he really talking about? It's, it's huge. Yeah. Secret of the Christ and all these type things. Uh, that's to come that we haven't realized yet. But just tapping into a little bit of that, some of this makes sense. His entreating right. to do these things, to love, to me, to bring it. Mm-hmm. You know, to bring it. Um, and, and it's to know these things, to be a member of something, you know. Yeah. That, yeah. Like what happened? There's nothing we can boast of. There's nothing we did. No. Well, at a minimum, we'd want to do all these things. Right. 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 So, yeah, we just hope to see the spirit within us. You know, you you read just a little bit farther yeah. than we had anticipated. But when we go back and see what you included, God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We're talking about sufficiency and completeness Mm-hmm. Overall, in all, through all. I don't know what what there is to worry to worry no, about. No, nothing to worry about. No. For sure. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. It's all a learning process along our journey. God knows what he's doing. Wherever you're at, he's got you right where he wants you. Yep. So yeah, try to take a little pressure off yourself. Mm-hmm. Or find ways to give yourself the ability to Lean do that and or say, yeah. permission to do that or however to say that. Yeah. That uh, bearing with one another, that can be bearing with yourself. Yeah. You know, in a way, I think right. sometimes you can, you can set uh, expectations for yourself that are, you're not qualified for, mm-hmm. you know, we've talked about what are you qualified for? Mm-hmm. 
And sometimes we qualify ourselves for things we're not qualified yeah. for. And that's unfair to ourselves. So mm-hmm. remember that. Hey, you all have a great week. Always enjoy the comments. And you know what I just thought about? This is coming out New Year's Eve. So Happy mm. New Year, everybody. <laughs> happy New Year. <laughs> Love you all. Thanks for joining us. See you again real soon. Bye.